Debbie, I wanted to go into a little bit of your background. You started Starvest in 1998. That's right. And can you tell us a little bit about how you got into venture because it wasn't the traditional path? My background has been in finance. I went to Harvard Business School and then I joined Merrill Lynch as an investment banker and a securities analyst and worked in New York, Hong Kong and Tokyo. So I had a variety of experiences. I then went with a Hong Kong based merchant bank where I started doing direct investing in the late 80s ran a small public company back in the U.S., and then joined some friends from Harvard Business School as a founder of a venture firm in the early 90s, which focused on business services. That gave me the background and really the idea to start Starvest, which was in the late 90s. Four of us came together as partners to found the firm, three of whom are women. So we are the largest owned venture firm in the country and had a very specific strategy, which was to invest in technology-enabled business services with a focus on e-commerce, internet marketing, and software as a service, particularly at the expansion stage, which we felt provided the best risk-reward ratio. And that means investing in companies generally having between two and $15 million of revenue um, that also have a technology that works, products, and referenceable customers. And let's talk about one of your very first investments, which was NetSuite. Yes. And you were the first institutional money in after Larry Ellison. That's right. And you've reaped a huge reward on that one. I think you mentioned earlier it was something in the range of $100 million That's back right. to investors. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how yeah. you found the company. That's been, I think, probably one of the, the best things in my career. It's not often that a venture capitalist gets to build a multi-billion dollar company. Um, I was asked to take a look at NetSuite by a section mate of mine from Harvard Business School and he called me and said, I know a lot of smart venture capitalists but I don't know many that I really would like to work with so can you please come out and take a look at this. So and he was based out here in Silicon Valley. He was based Valley. out here and our strategy is to invest uh, nationwide not with a particular uh, geography in mind but to identify the best companies within our area of focus. So we took a look and definitely decided that it was a fantastic opportunity. So over the last 10 years, we've helped build the company from 100,000 in revenues to a two point, I think, six billion dollar market cap today. So it's been very exciting. I've been on the board and I'm still the lead investor in that company and we still have a substantial position having sent back um, a lot of money to our investors so far, so they're very pleased. And you're hardly a one hit wonder. You had several uh, big exits last yes. year. Can we talk a little bit about those? That's right. Um, we sold Field Glass, which is an application that assists companies, enterprises, to manage their uh, spend on temporary workers. So that was terrific. They have a lot of large uh, companies as their customers, and we sold that for about 5x to a private equity buyer. We also sold iCrossing to Hearst Corporation. iCrossing is an internet marketing firm, and they were the really the entry by Hearst to get into this whole area. We sold insurance.com, which was an early um, e-commerce entry of selling insurance over the internet. We sold the assets to Quinn Street and are monetizing the book of policies in force. Those really were our major exits last year. We had three plus the continued monetization of NetSuite. So it was a great year for our investors, which we were very pleased with. And one thing I think is interesting is you're seeing a lot of venture firms these days sort of go beyond their initial strategy. You see uh, early stage guys getting into growth equity. You see people getting into consumer. Very late in the game, we saw Kleiner Perkins get into Facebook by buying up secondary shares at a, a pretty high valuation for and the time. they may make money yet, I'm they sure. They may make money, but it sounds like you've stayed very specific to strategy. I think the benefits of focusing are that you do become expert in an area, which I think is one of the keys to success for venture firms. Harvard Business School has done a lot of work on what makes a venture firm successful, and they have shown that specialized partners in specialized areas provide the best return for investors. Another thing is that we've been very careful about mission creep because the LPs that invested in us, and our LPs are primarily state and city pension funds, are looking for us to have a particular type of investment in a particular area of the market. So we've been very clear to stay what we feel we know. 
and our returns have been very good. So we feel that there's been um, real virtue in sticking to our original focus because we've become expert in that area. We focus primarily on B2B, very much on the enterprise, which is probably a lot less sexy than on the consumer. But we also feel that we know that area and that enterprises are careful purchasers. And we think that companies that successfully sell to enterprises are the ones that can build value. Whereas on the consumer side, very exciting, lots of value to be made, but also a lot more um, skittish. You may remember MySpace was very highly valued um, several years ago and just sold for $30 million. So that area is quite fraught as well. $35 million, to be fair. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> 35